Hi everyone, today I want to share with you 12 art journals that I really enjoyed working in and so it could be something that I'm working in right now which I think are about nine of the journals and they could be for different purposes like swatches so it's not I would actually not actively work in the journal but I would use it just to do swatches and then there are the ones that I'm kind of working on for maybe face illustrations others are for um, flowers etc so every one of those journals serves a purpose and we will um, have a look today at all of these journals because I thought it would be a very useful video for you to to understand what journal would be good for the thing that you like to do so let me just um, tidy up a little bit and then we're going to do one by one all right so let's start with this one so this is a traveler's notebook and um, it's not a sketchbook it's just the cover that you buy so it's from chic sparrow but i really really love it I will leave all the information below just because um, I know it's Mr. Darcy, but I forgot the color. I think it's buttered ram or something like that. And you can see it's lighter on the back and a bit darker uh, on the front. And that's because it's been um, exposed a little bit to the sunlight. And as you touch it, as you work with it, it kind of gets to this gorgeous color. And also when I got it first time, the leather was so impeccable that I was afraid to have the first scratch. And now the more I get these little marks and scratches, I actually really like it. So at the back here, you can see there's a, um, a scratch here. So I really don't mind it because it means that I'm using it and... Um, you know it's it's being loved all right so inside there I have a bunch of inserts and when I was first new to travelers notebooks I really wasn't sure what was the right uh, insert to buy and I ended up buying a lot of like a bunch of pretty bad ones on Etsy but anyways I had to learn it the hard way and then finally, I found this uh, shop on Etsy called Good Impressions Letterpress Handmade Stationery. And ever since, these um, are my favorite inserts because of the paper and because of how they are made. So they are actually the Tamoy River. So I tried quite a few of the inserts there's different papers you can get so i will leave the link below you can check out the shop but i just wanted to show you here so i've got this paper which is um this like off-white so it's the same one and yeah this is the same insert i think in different colors then I got this one which is mixed paper and it's good to, to try it out. So this is 52 white and then we have the 52 cream and then you have the 85 GSM Fedrigoni Splendor paper so it's a bit thicker and it's the ink behaves differently on on there so you can really have a feel what you like and what you prefer. And then the final one is this very kind of bluey white, which was my least favorite. I'm trying to think what the name of it was, but anyways, I don't don't remember. It's good for writing, but not so great for sketching purposes. Oh yeah, so this is the 80 GSM Premium Claire Fontaine paper. All right, so that's the uh, that's her mixed kind of insert. Great for trying it out. And so here is the paper, which is the 52 GSM. So it's quite a lot thinner in cream. And this is the cream, the 68 GSM. So it feels different. It looks different. Kind of ink looks really nice and smooth on there. There is hardly any buckling, although I did use a bit of water. So if you go with minimal water, I think this paper looks gorgeous for, you know, like illustrations like this here was a bit more water and so then there's a little bit more crinkling but that's the whole point of this paper and I personally really love both of them the thicker and the thinner but I think 
through the process of painting and sketching, I realized that I prefer the white color. So if I show you again, so this is the, uh, where's the mixed paper? Yes, yeah, so this is the mixed paper. Here is the white and here is the off-white. And I think I prefer the white better. But again, I do love, that's with watercolor, so with, with a bit of color. But if I'm just working with ink, just ink looks really gorgeous on the cream paper. Okay, so that's it for this. So I would, once I am done with the other inserts, I'll just remove them and I will always just use these ones because I love them. They're really good quality. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Next one I actually finished off. And this is the Jane Devonport um, journal. Now, a mixture of things here. And I did enjoy it when I was working with it. And um, there's a bunch of different things I did. So it's a mix really. Um, I didn't do anything specific. I just did everything and anything in there. It's really all different styles and swatches and just experimenting with different things. Um, illustrations, doodles, whatnot. It's, it's a nice, um, nice journal. So what kind of things I used on here? Ink, watercolour. Again, if you're using minimal watercolour, it'll be fine. If you like to do washes, the paper will start buckling. And the way it buckles is not in the most flattering way. So it kind of buckles where it changes the shape of the paper. Um, and but it's I mean it's it's all right it's a good paper for especially if you are a beginner um, and the other thing to say is it's got a bit of a texture so on one side the paper will be smooth and on the other side it will have a little tooth to it and if you like this tooth like it's square kind of like dotted lines um, type of tooth then I think you will enjoy this journal. I, I love kind of flicking through it because I had a lot of fun here and um, I also used uh, pencils um, things like that. I don't use markers in my illustrations so I won't tell you about those but yeah so this was fun um, she also has a bigger size of it and this particular one is a canvas so you can cover it with gesso and paint over it and create some art if you wanted to or it also comes in um, with covers um, that have her illustration on them. Okay next uh, bunch of sketchbooks is this one so these are the Stillman and Burn and they have a huge variety of different thicknesses of colors etc so I always uh, went for their white paper there is also one that's off-white but I prefer the white um, so their white is nice it's not a blue white so it's not one of those that's on the warm side or the cool side it's it's right in the middle and I really like it so first of all I have this cute little mini one which I think I would probably repurchase when I finish it because it's sort of kind of little pocket experiment and swatch book um, so what I do in here is when I get a new product, um, I basically swatch it out, do the transparency tests and things like that. Um, there's the Tim Holtz distress inks when I first got them. So you can see on this paper, they look really beautiful and there is no bleed through on the other side. Um, they're very vibrant and because the paper is white, they the the colors look beautiful here is the corset again looks really beautiful and bright just looks gorgeous um, so that's what I do I kind of just experiment with you know uh, with a watercolor or inks or whatever I get and create little illustrations that are on the small scale but they give me a good um, indication of how the watercolor behaves and then you know do like little doodles and things so it's a really neat little um 
sketchbook that I would recommend purely because it's it feels really good in your hand. I always have it on my desk so I can quickly um, grab it and start working or swatching or experimenting. And that's basically what I have been doing in this little one. Um, I am almost finished. I've got a few pages left, but I have really, really enjoyed it. Now, this uh, paper, it's the Beta series. I also have the Alpha series, which is this one, the Bur Burgundy one. The Alpha series is a thinner paper and the um, Beta series is the thicker. So, Beta series is... 270 GSM and let's see if I wrote this down here. Nope, I did not. I'll check what the Alpha series is and then I'll leave it in the uh, title below. So the paper is really good, really thick. You can see how thick it is. So it's good for watercoloring. It doesn't buckle as the one from Jane Davenport. As you can see, um, all the pages are straight and it does take quite a bit of water so really would recommend this one um, moving on to the other style of the beta series is this one this one was my first ever this is the hardcover it looks like a book and you can see that all of my sketchbooks are usually this kind of smaller size i don't like working in huge sketchbooks they're, I find them quite intimidating, especially if I open a page and it's like huge. And if I try to scale up whatever I want to do, it ends up looking ugly. So I like to work um, in smaller sizes. So uh, this was my first one. And like I said, it's the 270 GSM. I Hopefully you can see the um, improvement of my of my drawing, illustrating, watercolor style. So this started 1st May of 2017. So it's almost going to be two years this, uh, yeah, it's going to be two years this May. So in a couple of months. And um, that's when I sort of wanted to dive into the watercolors, but I didn't know what to do exactly. I didn't know the card got full and I'm using my second one, which is almost full as well. So I don't know whether I'll be able to finish this video because I have quite a few sketchbooks still to go. All right. So I was saying that here I was trying to establish my style and just experiment. And this were the Mijello, um, Mijello, uh Mission Gold watercolors which are gorgeous super super bright and sort of here I was trying to do some uh, journaling and kind of I like that should sort of art journal with writing and here you can see some of the terrible looking illustrations I was trying to do some splatters and I didn't have the right tools so they ended up looking quite not that nice and then I was doing some doodling so it's a bit of mixed media I really didn't know where to start so this is just pure experiment this is where um, I got my first schminke set and I was painting with it for a few days thinking what is going on it just doesn't feel right and then I realized I got the student grade schminke uh, rather so the Schminke Academy rather than the Schminke Horadam and that's when I then ended up investing into uh, Schminke Horadam which was qu quite costly but it was worth it so this um, just to give you an idea again the paper takes the watercolor really really well um, so this sketchbook I used for different things like I did this project during the summer a few summers ago where I would paint something every single day and yeah so that kind of thing and so it's it's really good paper um, you can see it looks the the illustrations and the paintings look quite nice on it so it's good. The only thing is it's hardcover and I learned my way that I actually prefer a soft cover rather than hardcover because it feels good like a little book but when I'm working in it actually I prefer this. It just feels kind of more comfortable. All right so let's move to the next beta series which is this one. So I decided to try the wire bound as well. So like I said you have so many varieties. It's still a hardcover so it's quite... Um, you know, um, 
sturdy so you can throw it into a handbag and or traveling with it and nothing will happen to it it won't bend it won't um, get damaged and the paper is exactly the same just in this format and I really enjoyed it I have to say I enjoyed working in it more than in the other one because it just lays flat and I love that the fact that I can just kind of open them up like that and it gives me this nice area to work in because for example you can see how close to the edge I'm working here and I was completely comfortable whereas in this type of format you'd have to kind of centralize because the page starts going inwards and if you're drawing unless you're really pushing down then you you know it's it's a little bit uncomfortable for that for that matter but it is completely individual. So this sketchbook I then dedicated to botanical. I know some of you who will watch it, they'll be like, please, please come on, do some more botanical. We love your watercolor uh, videos. I know and um, I hopefully can get back into it. I don't know why I just stopped um, doing that for a while. But as you can see, there is a page to fill. Um, I will definitely go back to that there's a little bit of um swatching but not um not as much i think i was trying to teach i think i i, I um, filmed a tutorial explaining how to mix these colors or something like that but predominantly it's all floral and it's all fun so i think i've done something on this page which doesn't look great so i covered it up on top that's the other thing you can do with this so as you can see here on the first page as well, I messed it up on the other side. So I just um, cut out another illustration and I stick it onto here. This is from Billy Shawl book, which I really, really like. I ended up doing the proper um, painting and it's framed in my hallway. So it looks gorgeous. And also this one is hanging, the, the, the finished one is hanging in my kitchen also framed it it's also by Billy Shawl. all right so um, here I've got quite a bit to go and then finally I've got the uh, alpha series which is I've gone for something completely different so thinner paper and also a um, soft cover so I believe it's the same size as this one but because of the binding of the book um, it's a little bit bigger and of the cover but it's the same size so the size I'm really happy with so this one is I dedicated it to face illustrations and in the beginning I was also a little bit confused what to do with it again a bunch of things in the beginning wasn't sure and then it just kind of clicked into place and I really enjoy using um, there's a little bit of backling but really good for this thickness of paper so it's, it's really good and um, I love using inks water watercolors and that type of thing so here is a bit of um, pencil water soluble graphite with a bit of water works beautifully here's um, more watercolor and ink it also works well with gesso um so yeah quite a bit of water here and it handled it really well so i love this quote it says here turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans so got quite a few pages to go here so this is my working one so i've got uh where are these so I've got these three that I'm still using. Okay, so now let's move into um, a bit of a mixed kind of thing. So this one is great if you are on a budget. So you can buy um, a watercolor paper block uh, or pad, cut it out yourself, buy some of these um, ring binders in um, like a stationary shop and you are good to go punch, punch your holes and you are done so you can do a bunch of things so why these are good is 
for things like dimension. So the journal journals I just showed you, they're no good for dimensional stuff because you won't be able, um, once you close the page, you won't be able to draw on it because you'll, you'll have this little bump to go over. So it will be a bit of a nightmare. So you need something like this. If you really like to create embellishments and a little bit of dimension, you can do whatever you want. This is a bit of a mix at the moment as well mixture of things so it's not established just yet so on this side i have a um, recipe card which i've done a tutorial on and on this side i have done a tutorial on this one and i use some puffy stickers to create some dimension for this label which says treasure so then i have um, different illustrations different papers so this one is in the working but something like that would be great to create yourself if you are on a budget or if you like to experiment with different mediums and you like some dimension 